Water hammer and steam and condensate system, segment three, the solutions, or the final segment. Water hammer forces are extremely dangerous. It's a major safety issue in steam and condensate systems. And the right hand picture is what happens when a steam line releases. Safety is the number one item in any steam and condensate system, followed by reliability. Water hammer always needs to be corrected immediately. Do not allow it to continue. There's a number of times we find you've got water hammer in the system and people will say, oh, it's been like that for a couple months. And what I tell people, I call that lucky. Because one day you are going to be unlucky. And things like what you see in that picture can occur. Prevention, proper training for plant personnel. Key factor in steam and condensate, always train your plant personnel on all aspects of the steam system. Ensure correct steam and condensate designs. The thing is, we talked about piping, configuration, steam trap station placement, condensate line sizing. All that's to ensure that the system is designed correctly. If you design correctly, there are no issues. The other thing is, is that if we eliminate water hammer, we get a very reliable system. Have documented SOPs, standard operating procedures, for steam startup shutdown, condensate line startup shutdown. Don't have people go out there and start up from memory. Make sure that they have a documented SOP. And then we can ensure that we're going to have a safe startup and a safe shutdown without water hammer. Have installation standards for steam components. How to place in isolation valves with warm-up valves in a drip pocket ahead of them. Have the standard showing how to pipe into condensate headers. Have a standard Diagrams, where do we need to place steam trap stations for condensate removal on steam lines so we do not have water hammer. So it's very important to have installation standards. If you don't have them, need help, contact us. We have a large number of diagrams at no cost to provide to you. Properly specify and place operating steam line drip steam trap stations on the steam system. Again, making sure that the steam traps are sized correctly, understanding P1 and P2. That the connection, the branch lines, go to the top of the condensate header, which we talked about, to eliminate the thermal shock water hammer from the system. The thing is, is that take time to size the steam traps. As much as you take the time and efforts to size a control valve, size the steam trap appropriately. Use warm-up valves and steam isolation valves larger than 2 inch. Do not crack open a large steam isolation valve with the hope of avoiding condensation and induced water hammer. This will not guarantee a safe operation. One of the most unsafe operations is people using external forces on large valves as shown in the picture on the right hand side to open the valve. The thing is, is that the valve manufacturer did not design the bonnet of the valve for that external force. So when you apply external force, you have a chance of breaking the bonnet and having a major failure. So don't do this. Always install warm-up valves. It's been a standard since 1920. So. Check and repair pipe insulation. Not only saves energy, but it reduces the accumulation of condensate in piping systems. One of the things is the fastest payback, insulate, insulate, insulate. Everything today gets insulated. Condensate line sizing is crucial. We talked about that. Do not exceed 4,500 feet per minute. Undersized condensate lines is one of the largest contributors to water hammer. So make sure you take your time and effort to size a condensate line. 
A rule of thumb, steam line's three inch, condensate line should be three inch or larger. System that has a modulating control valve should have a drip leg upstream of the valve to remove condensate during a closed condition of the valve. Rule of thumb, any valve that shuts off needs to have a steam trap station ahead of it to remove the condensate that will accumulate. Condensate can be delivered in a pressurized condensate return line where only proper differential is maintained across a drain device, which can be a steam trap or control valve. Again, understanding P1 and P2. Also, properly label steam and condensate lines. Take the extra time to label the line so we know what's in the line and the flow direction. If the steam and condensate lines abandoned, it's never going to be used again. Remove it from the system. Don't leave it energized. And always have a proactive maintenance program. The world of steam is great. We've been very fortunate to be able to travel the world and helping clients throughout the world. We want you to have, number one, a safe operation. Number two, have a reliable operation. Our company, we're based in Tampa, Florida. We do do steam system assessments, steam balance, steam system performance analysis. And key thing, another key factor is training. Long end term, uh, term impact that we have with our clients is upgrade process changes, lower costs of steam, and we are your partners. So if you have any questions or we can be of service, our email addresses are here below. Contact myself or Graham and we'd be more than happy to help you. Thank you for your time to listen to us. Hopefully this has been of a help to you. Have a great day.